Hello and welcome to an open source live code hangout. We'll be working today on the piano practice app we're creating with the Godot engine. It looks like this. It has a basic piano display at the bottom. You can find the source code here on GitHub. You can see the link at the bottom of the video there. Godot Garden piano practice. The goal of this app is to help me learn the piano. <laughs> I think most, uh, many good apps, so to speak, <laughs> uh, start out as um, a personal interest or personal need. What I mean by good is like meaningful and perhaps popular or useful. Uh, the developer has some insight into a particular problem they're facing. And so it's, it's more prepared to solve their own problem or that of somebody they know than just a hypothetical person. So I'm learning piano. I started piano as a child, but then stopped playing for many, many years. <laughs> I suppose you, I could say many years at least, maybe too many. And um, recently I've picked it back up right around COVID time, COVID onset, where I was sort of saying, hey, what am I doing? What do I want to be doing? And uh, as I continue to practice, you know, there's basic things I need to develop. One is repertoire, learning to play songs. And there's some really great apps for that. So I'm not going to try to compete with those apps. In fact, I use a couple of them. And learning to read sheet music likewise. Uh, Simply Piano, Flowkey. Those are my two main apps for those skills and uh, but uh, technique development is not as emphasized in those apps or from what I can tell there's not many apps that actually focus on technique and so this uh, in terms of technique I mean just scales arpeggios triads those types of things where you have just got to get the these uh, theoretical concepts into your muscle memory you got to know your chord inversions uh, be able to fluidly arpeggiate a triad or seventh chord, cross multiple octaves, these kind of things. So we would call them, I don't know, drills or something like that. And this is going to be more of a technique drilling game. I think there's a need for that, my particular need, uh, to be able to do my chord inversions and get those so that I don't have to think so hard when I'm playing pieces that involve these inversions. So. Let's see what we've got so far. We don't have much. <laughs> we have a gray background and a piano. But the key thing is I have a little piano to my side here. When I play the piano, we see the notes and the, the and harmonics and everything. So <laughs> that's already great progress. And I think there's like apps that do this that you can put on your little on your stream and it'll show what keys you're playing. I've taken some pragmatic shortcuts here. I'm not displaying these offset like uh, the chromatic or inharmonic notes are not like staggered. And it's just uh, also easier that way. You still have this three, two pattern that you can see where you are. It's your, oops, your piano GPS, your three, two <laughs> coordinate system. You can see what I'm talking about though. I don't have the muscle memory. I can't just jump three, two, three, two, three, two, Three. There we go. That was not bad. Without looking, the muscle memory is like your hand and fingers can work without any conscious effort and without looking. So you can focus usually on reading music or something like that or improvising. So cool. We've got a basic thing going on here. Uh, now that uh, and this is all committed, the next step, what is the next step? I haven't even thought about that. <clears throat> A roadmap, in other words, maybe I have feasibility, market research, <laughs> educational goals and mechanics. That's a good point. High level project plan, timelines and resource. Okay, but here we're at prototype already. I do need to do these. I can do them online. So we've got a game engine and programming language, a simple user interface of piano and put in display. 
Basic key highlighting, done. Simple level with single musical concept, e.g. playing fifths. That's actually the foundation. Fifths. So to know your fifths by muscle memory, and it's just this wide, so it's actually kind of easy. Depending on the size of your hand, you might stretch a bit. I think that's by design. The keys need to fit under our fingers and our fingers span, our hands span about the interval of a fifth, which is the probably the, it's the fundamental interval in music of many cultures. I think maybe it's universal because it's the first uh, meaningful uh, interval relationship you encounter in the harmonic series on which I would say on which music is based, musical <coughs> information. Things that sound musical and not just like noise or um, these other systems of uh, sound that have been produced and explored particularly in the 20th century. Um, for their own right, they're interesting, but maybe not always musical. <clears throat> music, I think, is based in physics and psychology, or psychoacoustics. All right, so here's one thing. I can't click a note, but <clears throat> click or touch interactions wasn't an uh, initial goal, but I suppose would be a good one. Um, at least if I could mm, indicate the fifth here. <clears> hmm. <throat> And yeah, I might want to play on an iPad that has touch interactions. So let's start there today. Actually, I'd like to get here some information here because there's a essentially what I'm going to need to do is create exercises. I want to create exercises, a single musical concept. In order to do that, I have to have some kind of a global state to know what the player is pressing and not just in the keys. I'm pointing here to the global state, but it's just more abstract than that. And then that way I can compare it with what they, sh you know, should be playing or uh, how long it took between pressing two consecutive notes, those types of things. So maybe just a basic uh, display would be a good one. All right, let's see. Does uh, does the Godot editor have? built-in version control, yes. All right, so how do we do that? Plugin, git, go to git plugin. The official, all right. Interesting. I'll take a quick look at it. Uh, otherwise, I'll use VS Code probably, or just Git terminal. Uh, it's fine also, maybe. I uh, I like the Godot editor, but I'm um, thinking I'd well rather be in VS Code, but I don't know. And I don't want to install it in this project. Okay, I don't know how, how this works. So let's just... Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. So we got a little bit of something. Got a branch there. 
piano display. Close this. How do I close this? Piano display. Closing. No. How do I close this? This thing. Get this off my screen. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably just doing something wrong here. Oh, yeah, I was in acid limit. That's right. There we go. <laughs> I'm just not used to the Godot editor. <clears throat> market research would be a good one. I have, I mean, I've done a little bit of market research for my own pedagogical purposes. Like, I want to learn piano. So I've looked at these apps and I've been seeing what's out there. And, you know, I found a lot of good tools and helping you learn music theory and uh, ear training apps and compositional aids and, you know, music production software, of course, and Simply Piano and Flow Key for, and other similar apps for learning uh, repertoire and reading, sight reading and those types of things. So the key factors I'd like is something that takes MIDI input that I can play and get feedback from my MIDI input. I'm not going to uh, go down the path of um, signal decomposition and harmonic analysis that we would need for like musical input uh, via a microphone. Uh, I think that's way too complex and honestly where I've encountered that in apps like Simply Piano and Floki, it's um, just it's so difficult that it, the results are poor no matter, despite the resources that people are putting into it in companies. I think we'll just avoid that. So let's load our, our piano display scene and uh, try to familiarize with the code base. So it's just MIDI, MIDI only app. That's the design goal, design constraint. So we've got our keyboard connected here. I'm not familiar with good old game architecture. I got some warnings on use parameter delta never used. Integer division, decimal part will be discarded. So this is the piano display scene. But what I think is I need this um, project to have a hmm, another scene that will pass information into the piano display scene. manage the MIDI connection. And have two children, two child scenes perhaps. Uh, <clears throat> like a text level instructions uh, I haven't really whiteboarded this or anything like that we might do that and then the piano at the bottom all right but let's give chat GPT something to work with here GPT 4 uh, it's got a lot of latent knowledge perhaps a little bit of latent knowledge about Godot 4x series So I'm making a game with Godot 4.x, specifically 4.2.1. I'd appreciate some assistance with game arch architecture, programming, and planning. <clears throat> I don't have any experience with Godot. I've done quite a lot of software development, particularly like Python, but some JavaScript. So in terms of syntax, uh, GDScript is fairly familiar, but like the architecture and paradigms and all this, the, even programming games is quite different than 
programming a web application, for example, or a mobile app. I've gone a little bit down the road of <clears throat> prototyping this style of app with Flutter. There's a game engine in Flutter called, uh, oh, what the heck is it called? Anyway. I can't remember, but uh, a couple of uh, reasons I didn't end up going with Flutter is doesn't have MIDI support built in. So for MIDI input, which this app is going to use, I would need to turn to a, a third party library. And having been burnt by the JavaScript ecosystem and seeing a lot of parallels and similarities in the Flutter ecosystem, it doesn't, it seems very nascent. Uh, I just don't have trust in the Flutter ecosystem at this point, the package ecosystem. I hope it, uh, I hope it improves and I'm not trying to disparage that. I just, it takes a bit for me to trust a uh, package ecosystem after like the experiences I've had with JavaScript development <clears throat> and even Python package ecosystem has problems. It's just, you know, common wealth and common the tragedy of commons applies all right so that aside i'd like to have a core support for this um, for midi especially because it's central to the application as i was mentioning we're going to be using midi to detect midi to detect the input from the user it's the main interface that we'll be using maybe touch as well also i made a basic metronome app with flutter and um it suffered from timing issues because the essentially the internal timing uh, in Flutter is tied to the um, I'm not sure the f technical underpinnings, but it's essentially time tied to the the frame rate of the app or something. It was too coarse of a resolution for a musical metronome. Our ears can detect deviations in rhythm that are fairly small, surprisingly small. And especially when you're wanting something like a metronome that's going to give you the uh, steady rhythm and beat. Little fluctuations actually, not only are they discernible, but they're irritating. And um, in order to get real steady and real time control in a Flutter app, I had to install a package that allowed me to get into uh, fi fi fibers, I think it was called. I can't remember, but essentially into the threading and it was already a bit abstract for me how that worked but it didn't lend a lot of confidence now i'm bringing that up because this is also a musical app and we will be dealing with musical timing and measuring um distance between note presses so i believe timing is important and i hope uh at flutter uh sorry godot as a game engine uh, is very like acutely aware being primarily a game engine and dealing with user input that has to be very precise at times <clears throat> timing matters so i'd again like to have a framework and a development environment that supports precise and reliable timing we might for example implement a metronome we will likely implement a metronome in fact because uh, a lot of music is just learning to play at particular rhythms and playing the arpeggiations for example or through chord inversions at this tempo or that is a part of our development starting in a slow tempo playing it on rhythm and then working up so yeah metronome is going to be key here and based on my experience in flutter that of uh flutter core not being able to make a reliable metronome i again kind of decided to go with goto so these are my rationale the idea of comparing the frameworks is to see what the options are and what best fits the project, right? At the beginning stage of the project, we had to go through this um, <laughs> uh, roadmap. And part of it was to choose uh, programming language and game engine. And we'll, you know, so we're choosing GD script because it's very well supported in, in a good old game engine. And otherwise we would be in Dart. And not, you know, I'm not gonna develop in Unity I want the game and game engine to be fully open source. And the Flame engine looks good and probably has good timer resolution. But another a third part is we might want to output some sound to the users. For example, this is hypothetical, but if we press the keyboard with touch, I might want to hear a piano sound played 
or with my MIDI, I might want, since it's just a MIDI controller and it's not actually outputting any sound, I might want to hear the presses by playing a, a web file or MP3 or something. And uh, Godot uh, has, of course, built in uh, sound. Uh, whereas Flutter doesn't, and I've tried even just in the metronome app again to play the metronome sound, and uh, there was uh, several competing um, audio-related um, plugins that were just not around core playing a sound, but like about building player MP3 player interfaces and things. Um, yeah, it, and they even just playing sound was really a pain <laughs> in Flutter. It was just because it's not what it's built for. The reason I'm bringing up Flutter so much is because it was, it's a great cross-platform, multi-platform development framework. I'm looking at it seriously in the context of some other applications. And I'd like to build this app so that it can be used in mobile and perhaps web contexts with web MIDI. So all of those came into my uh, decision-making progress process when selecting a programming language in the game engine and just thought I would document why I've landed on Godot and started prototyping here the core requirements so I could actually So that gives a little bit more information there. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, giving ChatGPT a little bit of information. It's a personal assistant, so we want to help prime the model, just like you. I would prime myself when I'm thinking of ideas. Um, give it a little bit of information, say what we're trying to achieve, and then it will give us some output, which uh, it's like priming me for, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. I need to maybe create a game design document, right? You should always have a game design document. <laughs> A GDD, of course, I've heard that. I've been watching some YouTube videos. That's essential even for small games. Uh, iterative development, you know, version control. These are uh, these are things that are more baked into my uh, open source muscle memory, so to speak. Uh, but the game design document, maybe not so much. Performance and testing. Test your game for performance. Engage the community. So I'm on Twitch, for example. Godot documentation, tutorials, sample projects. Okay, so these are just generic things. You know, I gave it just a d basic goal, what I'm trying to achieve, and it's given me some high-level thoughts. Scene structure is what I'm really trying to think about today. Inheritance composition, we'll be dealing with that a lot. Composition in particular, I believe Godot takes the philosophy of composition over inheritance, which means we're building things out of common Lego blocks instead of hierarchies of classes. Uh, singletons, that's probably where we'll put our state. 
A game manager and audio control is interesting. Signals uh, for decoupling nodes. So, yes, we'll have to look at the signals and maybe some signals for key presses on the keyboard. I don't know. Very good. So this is again a, a key difference uh, in styles of development. I'm coming from a web development, web application development background. Uh, not using signals a lot, although there are types of signals in the Django web framework, for example. Um, sometimes those are called hooks or, yeah, variously, but, uh, so, you know, where you, you have an event and you can subscribe to it from other code. So that's a key part of game development, though. Physics and movement. Yeah, we're not going to probably maybe just, uh, deal with physics too much. The UI, well, I should be starting to spec it out. And the animations, well, it should, we should think about those as well. All right, very good. And remember, game development is a process of continuous learning and iteration. Don't hesitate to experiment and make changes as needed. If you have a specific if you have specific questions or need assistance with certain aspects of your Godot project, feel free to ask. This is great. So let's start again at a high level. Uh, here's the project outline. And this is where I'd kind of like to have a um, copilot or something built into the uh, editor, which we do in VS Code, but I was trying off stream to get VS Code to work and uh, it didn't seem like a great, strong connection. So here we are. Uh, and I like the good editor. It just one key feature I think now that it would be important to add is uh, support for these uh, large language model uh, coding assistance. First class support again, not the ecosystem support. I know it's probably not a priority of the Godot project though. So how to balance that? Even VS Code, it's not a core feature. It's a plugin you add GitHub Copilot. Um, I'll give it the code as well, since we're such a small project. And in the piano display scene with a single 2D node. That's basically it. Not much at all. I'm not going to make it a particular request here. I'm going to just give it the context and see what we get uh, in response. Control enter? No, I don't know. How. What's the keyboard shortcut there? But we have a bit of context window, so I might as well just provide the code. Okay, project outline and provided piano display script. Give a clear picture of what you're aiming to achieve with your Godot engine. Or my Godot engine. That's an interesting thing. That's a nice subtlety is that it's not literally mine. It's ours, but it's open source. And, you know, it's got a benevolent dictator and some hierarchy and organization built around it. So those people are mostly influential and responsible for the continuation of the project. And it has donors and investors. Uh, it's got a community in other words, but I do feel a bit more invested than I would if I were using Unity or Unreal Engine, which are uh, kind of quasi open source and no organization is without politics and political decision-making Open source is not impervious to that, but 
in particular Unity recently has alienated a lot of people with some of their decisions made based on financial interests of the company. Uh, so Godot is not, again, immune to put bad, uh, potentially bad <coughs> decisions affecting the community, but I just have more uh, sort of implicit trust. <clears throat> so here we go. We've done a solid job in setting up the core logic and displaying a piano keyboard with ChatGPT. <laughs> Handling MIDI input. Updating the UI to reflect the key presses. Let's review some key aspects and potential enhancements. This is what I'm getting at. I didn't ask it for anything, but I was seeing if it would just uh, summarize and suggest things that I probably haven't even thought to ask. <clears throat> Let's see. MIDI input handling. Your implementation for MIDI input seems well structured. You've correctly handled note on and note off messages, which are crucial for piano display. Ensure that the MIDI device compatibility and latency are tested extensively. All right. Uh, I can see the latency is a factor, but I'm not sure how much I'm going to test the implementation of the Godot framework, right? <clears throat> keyboard rendering. The logic for rendering the piano keyboards is set up to dynamically create keys based on the number of octaves and note names. This dynamic approach is versatile. However, consider adding error handling or fallbacks in case of invalid parameters. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. That's where things like fuzz testing can come in handy. Uh, however, since uh, just on that note, I'm thinking aloud, uh, you know, it's controlled here in the key uh, and not in the user interface, but in the code. I mean, it's, we are reducing the likelihood of uh, that type of a situation occurring where you would get invalid uh, input, for example, from a user having a free text box. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's not dwell too long here. UI and key display. The use of color rec nodes for each key is straightforward and effective. You might want to add more visual feedback, such as animations when keys are pressed or released to enhance the user experience. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Performance optimization. Well, your current approach should work well for a moderate number of keys. If you plan to expand the keyboard significantly, keep an eye on performance. Well, we're not. 88 keys is about the max we would support but that's something the model maybe doesn't take into account i don't know audio feedback if you haven't already implementing audio feedback for your key presses would be greatly enhanced the realism of your piano simulator you couldn't use godot's audio stream player for this user interface consider adding additional ui elements for user interaction like volume control octave shifting or instrument selection if your midi setup allows for it those are interesting ideas Error handling and logging, robust error handling, especially for MIDI input and key generation, will make your application more stable. Additionally, more detailed logging might help in debugging and development. Documentation and commands. Your code is quite clean and reliable, but make sure to add sufficient comments and documentation, especially explaining the MIDI in, uh, handling logic here. Yeah. As it can get quite complex for someone unfamiliar with MIDI protocols. Makes sense. Extensibility. Think about how your code can be extended in the future. For instance, if you want to <clears throat> add different types of instruments or different input methods. Mm. Yeah, we'll think about extensibility later. Testing feedback. Test across different devices. Okay, gather user feedback. Future enhanced. Recording and playback. Is future enhanced? You might want to add the ability to record and playback the MIDI input. <clears throat> I could see that as an interesting feature. Uh, for example, on like Mario Kart, you've got your ghost self you kind of compete against. Um, that's interesting. But Mario Kart, you know, you're trying to do it faster and more efficiently. Okay. Uh, piano, you're sort of trying to do things more fast and efficiently. That's the key. You know, hugging the curves and things like that, drifting, all those techniques and refinements that you do after thousands, hundreds or thousands of laps. That's sort of on the piano, like what you're trying to do as well. You get to know these scales and modes and chord and versions and everything really efficiently. However, there's uh, conversely this tendency to try to be pushing speed really fast in piano playing prematurely. We try to do things fast. I'm doing this in my piano lessons. My teacher will say, okay, do the chord inversions. And I'll be like, boom, boom, boom. I'll like hop through them. She's like, okay, slow down and get them right before you uh, focus on speed. If you, Otherwise, you'll just learn the wrong thing fast. So that's a balancing act there. We want to encourage slowness and accuracy 
um, before progressing to a faster rate. Whereas Mario Kart the analogy is like, yeah, you're kind of going for speed all the time. Got pressure on you to go fast. Anyway, all of this is stream of consciousness from that. Suggestion. Customizable layouts. Yeah, we might want to think, uh, of course, that the piano keys and screen sizes will differ. I have a 49 key piano, 49 key here, yeah. Very cool. Hey. Dungeoneer 3 just followed. Dungeoneer, thanks for the uh, follow. Appreciate it. How are you doing today? All right, so I think some of these, at least a couple of these are interesting. And let's get a quick, uh, let's get them onto our roadmap. Um, audio feedback, please. Okay, so uh, please. Uh, GitHub to issue description. For the audio feedback feature request, because we're not, uh, I'm gonna do that right now, but I think that would be a low-hanging fruit. I'll put that on our project roadmap on GitHub and even mark it as help wanted and good first issue. Somebody might be interested in contributing. Yeah, so this is nice. It can help me with project management as well. So we'll go over here to GitHub issues. Create a blank one while it's typing. Currently the piano display application visually simulates a piano keyboard and MIDI input support, displaying the key presses and releases. However, there is no audio feedback when the keys are pressed. Implementing an audio feedback feature will significantly enhance the user experience by providing real-time auditory cues corresponding to the key presses, closely mimicking an actual piano. So that's the key, uh, is that it'll have to play the right note, perhaps, you know, like the right frequency, uh, the right pitch. Let's see what it says about pitch. When a piano key is pressed, mini note on message received. Should application should play a sound corresponding to the key's note. Yeah, pitch. Uh, the sound should cease immediately or fade out properly. Ooh, that's a bit tricky, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Audio playback. If it has natural decay, for example, or if I'm using the sustain pedal, that's gonna... <laughs> These features grow features really quickly. And we're not building necessarily a keyboard instrument, like a virtual piano instrument. All right. Interesting, interesting. Okay, but let's, uh, I'll just copy and paste this. And we'll update it a little bit later. But new issue, I think this is our first GitHub issue. Yeah, this feature will significantly improve the realism and interactivity of the piano display application. It will also lay the groundwork for future enhancements such as different instrument sounds or recording functionality. Oh boy. See, that's what I'm afraid of. You got to keep your scope in check. Also notice that it's using this... <laughs> Uh, bad habit of starting with the th like uh, header level three and four to change the font size, changing the font size here, which people do on GitHub, and GitHub even itself defaults to this. These should be header level two though. Uh, Not where's the asterisk there? The piano sound. just to kind of keep our expectations in check. It's so pervasive that this is built into the model to use header level too. All right, so now we can add some labels here. We're header level three and um, 
above or below, I don't know what the word is, good for his history to hands help wanted. So if I tag it with those, somehow, somehow this gets out there. We'll just go with it as it's written with a caveat here. And of course we can adjust the, the scope and requirements. I'm just getting into the backlog so I can get to the actual code. <laughs> but these were some good suggestions. Um, we're not going to tackle the extensibility thing until we know we need it. We probably don't need it. Audio feedback was a good one. Performance optimization. I don't know that we have any performance issues. Uh, but note. So then, yeah, and here's what happens when you, oh, it's actually giving me the markdown with the proper headers, but cool. Uh, anyway, we got the issue in there. Now we're gonna create a, an issue for the game design document. This is an important thing and I don't want to delay it too long on this project. And we might in fact draft it on stream here. Uh, please create a, an issue to This is weird grammar, but I think it'll it'll understand what I mean. So please create an issue uh, to create the initial draft of the game design document. Uh, since I don't have much direction yet for this project, I think that's the purpose of the game design document. You start thinking of the direction, the purpose, the scope, uh, a lot of the key elements that are that are essential for a successful game project. And even it's helping us with this structure here. This is nice. Using the proper uh, markdown header level two. You can see how big they are and people don't like the size of these headers. So they'll use the header level three to make the font size smaller. It's just a side effect of web development, the way browsers render headers, if anything. The default CSS in browsers could be adjusted and it would, I think, help <laughs> reduce this uh, tendency to create poorly structured HTML. All right, so let's create a new issue. This is a good one. Let's check these headers. Boom. Header level two. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, man. <clears throat> it, it did get the point. What I meant is that that's even header level three is pretty big. <clears throat> pretty big font size. I'm not going to nitpick it too much. I'm going to correct it, though. I'll just... Uh, I'm going to correct this in markdown, but also the um, GPT. I'll just mention what I, I'll clarify what I meant, but so it doesn't have to re reproduce the whole output. Uh, this is uh, not a good first issue. <laughs> it's a bit complicated.
All right. Thank you for the clarification regarding the markdown heading levels. I'll ensure that the future GitHub issue descriptions start with an H1 for the title and use H2 for subsequent subsections followed by H3 and so on. Your feedback is greatly appreciated in maintaining this right structure and accessibility standards. If you have any more requests or need further assistance, please feel free to ask. Okay. Looking good. Yeah, see, then the header in level two gets a little underlined even. It's like, wow, nice. Looking good. Cool. All right. Suggestions. Uh, so this could be a good discussion. Let me make sure we've got discussions enabled here. Game design document. Hmm. But yeah, we want to get it into there, into the community, and that's where people can contribute. The issue itself is a bit technical, but it's essentially creating just a markdown file and drafting some content. Uh, but uh, the community really can contribute ideas and direction to the project. I don't have the whole direction. I've outlined the basic goals. Uh, to help improve muscle memory with piano techniques such as scales, arpeggios, chord inversions, memorization of you know the, all the different scales and triads and chords, of course, which is what I mean by muscle memory. It's like subconscious. You just have it in your hands. You don't have to think about it anymore. Good. We will just create a little thing of a bob here, and this will be under general. Ideas, uh, sort of, is, it's about ideas. Get started. Let's see if it uses the right markdown. Hey, it does. Heading level one. So it kind of it took that conversation, the request to use proper headings uh, for GitHub issues. <laughs> Hello, fellow developers and game enthusiasts. I'm just, yeah, we are embarking on an exciting journey to create. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting, you can tell it was written by a GPT. Uh, <laughs> you know, everything's a journey, embarking. It's like it read too much, I don't know, 19th century fiction. Uh, let's use uh, Grammarly. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. I mean, I like the tone. It's fun, but... Uh, Let's create a new document and paste all that in there. Uh, this is a creative endeavor. We're here to convince, tell a story. Let's tell a story. General to everybody and kind of informal. So, the GDD accept it. Most of these blue ones I'll just take. Any other aspect? It just kind of helps to simplify the writing. Shortens up some phrases. Avoids common words, reorganizes, oops, and then of course I don't need this. Of this game, yeah. 
Yeah, I've been speaking and writing English for quite a while, but I, I just, uh, you know, still learning. Now, here's a cool thing that Grammarly has. If I zoom in here and I go to Generative AI and I say, make more straightforward, create an outline, more, improve it. Uh, I like, uh, ooh, there's some new ones. Clean up notes, make it descriptive, details, simplify it. I like simplifying things. And that helps. This is improved, changing the tone by making it usually straightforward language or direct but direct can sound rude i don't want to sound formal let's see if we can simplify it let's see what happens if we simplify it this is a large language model similar to gpt but by a different company called anthropic let's create a new game using godot for to one. <laughs> We're working on a game design document which will do, uh, guide our development process. It'll cover everything from the game mechanics to the art style and technical requirements. We want to get your creative ideas and insights to help shape the game. It sounds better than hello fellow developers and game enthusiasts. We are embarking on an exciting journey. And uh, go to 4.2.1 is pretty specific. It's not the deal. We want to discuss and brainstorm Several key aspects, including the core idea and genre of the game, unique gameplay mechanics, story, and characters, art and sound. This is where we need your brilliant minds and creative ideas. So again, I don't mean to sound too um, critical of the GPT. Uh, I can tell it to have a different writing style, and of course, we'll uh, rewrite that. Now, here's the thing I like, the key discussion point, game concept and genre. What is the core idea? Where the genre fits in? I don't want to kind of lose those. And the how to participate, this is pretty cool. I don't have a place where we can collaborate. Let's get this conversation started. So in essence, I would actually just probably be, be more refined here and uh let me just see here <laughs> create a piano hey petrasio welcome to the live stream how are you doing today piano learning game Working on an open source, uh, the grand plan here, that's what we're getting at, is this game design document that'll give us more information about the grand plan. That's a great question. So I don't have a simple answer, but the grand plan is to help people like myself learn piano. Um, specifically piano techniques, like scales, modes, chords, chord inversions, I believe there's a gap, a market gap, for apps that help you learn, focus on drills and techniques and other parts of your piano learning journey, such as repertoire, learning songs, learning to improvise perhaps. Um, those are pretty well covered in the market and that's a part of the market analysis. So we don't wanna compete with those. Like apps like Simply Piano and Floki really are great for learning songs and songs implicitly teach you technique. But this app is to help people learn explicitly muscle memory of common patterns on the neck of the <laughs> guitar, no, but on the uh, piano. <laughs> I also play guitar, so I'm a bit confused. And that's a big part of learning guitar is pattern recognition. But yeah, so I just want to say I'm playing a C major triad. Boom, hit that with my hands without even looking, right? C major, uh, C major four, uh, fourth octave or whatever. Uh, C major, first inversion. I don't even have to think about it. D minor, D major, uh, broken chord, D major, uh, you know, like some pattern and um, D major arpeggio. So yeah, helping people learn and internalize piano patterns. And that puts us on a, um, a level where we're prepared to um, learn more advanced repertoire without having to get too tangled up with our fingers. I'm taking a piano lesson and my teacher is pointing out, yeah, you need to learn the blues scale. You need to learn your chord inversions without thinking of them. And when I do the chord inversions, I actually kind of have to look going up and going down even 
are different. And then doing both hands together, I can tell I need some practice there. And hopefully we'll have an app that will kind of coach you, keep track of your progress, encourage you to play correctly, but also increase your speed using a metronome as you are comfortable with slower tempos. So you become more fluid and efficient, kind of like Mario Kart racing for piano scales and modes and things. With visual guides, yeah, I should actually just show you the app real quick. So if I run the app, the bass is totally visual. It's not abstract. That's one thing. Uh, music notation is important to learn, but I've, I've waited, waited a long time to learn it. I'm still learning it. But yeah, just a visual representation of the piano here. And even just simple that you get this 3-2 pattern. 3-2... Three. So this is your piano GPS two, three, two, and so you can kind of know where you are. And I want to play. So I'm going to play C major, D minor, D major. Whoops. Uh, you know whatever the triads are. I should be able to play this with my left hand. You can see I'm kind of clumsy. Or I can start with a fifth, fifth from C, fifth from D. Learning those and starting building into it and up, up here there will be more information. That's the next step But right now I'm doing a bit of project management stuff But yeah com uh, Visual and auditory right? We, uh, that's another feature we just added. We should kind of hear the notes. I'm using a MIDI uh, Controller which doesn't have output some people might actually you want to use a touch screen And so we could add that some people have a MIDI piano. I also have a MIDI capable electronic piano, electric piano, that outputs sound, so that feature's not needed by everybody. Yeah, so that's the, that's the big picture, helping people be more comfortable and creative with their instrument, with their pianos. <laughs> As out of a personal interest, I'm learning piano. Do you play any instruments, or uh, are you musical? Or what kind of creativity uh, do you do? I should probably have put piano in the stream title. Okay, it's a piano game though. And there'll be like little metrics too, visual metrics. You can see, hey, I started out 60 BPM with 80% accuracy and now I'm at 80 BPM with 85% accuracy. You can see your progress over time. Accuracy means not only not pressing the wrong keys, but also I should say fluidity. So that those could be separate mech. Uh, metrics. We would measure how many wrong keys you pressed as well as how fluid was your motion, the timing, how consistent it was when you move through those inversions and uh, also visual guides to show which fingers to press because certain chord grips you use different combination of fingers like there's jazz triads which are played with these three and then classical triads which are played with these three and then each of the inversions you have a different combination of fingers Never played an instrument. That's cool, though. This might help you uh, get started with one if you're if you're interested in that. Not everybody is, but uh, it seems like uh, you might be interested in game development. Do you ever sing? Because that's actually the most close and intimate way of exploring music is through our voice. I sing mostly in the shower, but I've started... Uh, Singing more in other places now. I was in a choir for a little bit. I'm um, doing a song group, singing group with friends, and I'm singing as I'm going around town, practicing in places where there's a lot of noise or traffic where I don't feel so self-conscious. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's uh, get this little thing written. School, of course. Yes, that's a good place. So let's write this to be more straightforward, right? And... Uh, that's where I'll use this generative AI. It used to be called Grammarly Go, but they repurposed uh, it. Or re labeled it. Yeah, come to think of it, I was in a school course about <laughs> about 30 years ago as well. Wow, I, f I forgot about that. I think it was common in grade school, perhaps, to have music class and learn songs. Huh. Okay, this is not working for some reason. Let's see, maybe there was just a bit of a 
lag there we go more and this was i just wanted to simplify it now we're gonna these are non-deterministic so we'll get a different result welcome game enthusiasts and developers we're thrilled to be creating a piano learning game all right still game enthusiasts and developers is a bit um, awkward but uh, eh, nah, not too bad uh, we're currently at a crucial stage for development process, crafting the game design document. This document will guide us in creating the game, covering everything from game mechanics to storylines and art style, technical requirements. Interesting. I hadn't even thought about that. Should the game have a story? Pro probably would be cool. Wow. Like, why am I learning piano? I have intrinsic motivation to learn the piano. I'm interested in that. And that's that's the main that's the main source. That's the most important source. Shouldn't be forced on people, of course. But then the game story can give you extrinsic motivation. Hmm. Okay. We need your help to make this game as awesome as possible. The GDD is a collaborative document and vision that we want to build together. We value your insights, experiences, and suggestions in creating a game that resonates with all of us. Whether you're a game designer, developer, artist, writer, tester, or simply someone who loves games, your contribution is invaluable. Invaluable. Wabble. All right, sounds good. What's this? My voice? It's not going to record me, is it? Ah, okay. Witty. <laughs> I don't know if I'm very witty. My profession? Engineer. I call it a developer though, but okay. Mm, I guess. Yeah. Acknowledge Grammarly and Gen AI use. How do I rate the game Guitar Hero with the buttons on the guitar neck? Very interesting question, yeah. Well, I think Guitar Hero is the is a good model. So yeah, trade-offs of Guitar Hero. One, well, it focuses uh, like so. Let me think here. It focuses a lot on accuracy, and it's repertoire oriented. You have to hit the bot buttons at the right time. So it's mainly a timing mechanic. And correct button of four buttons, I think, right, and uh, at the right time. Um, now it. Probably is obvious to say that say this, but it doesn't teach you to play the guitar. So that's one thing. We're actually trying to teach you piano, uh, and I'm not putting putting guitar here down. I'm just kind of th thinking aloud here, uh, differentiating as well. And uh, it te uh, focuses on like you know interesting songs uh, in repertoire. We call that right in music learning and. Um, there's some really great piano learning apps that focus on repertoire, specifically Simply Piano and Flowkey. Simply Piano. Flowkey. And there's even one built here in Finland called Musician, which I really would like to use, but every time I look at it, there's just some things that are kind of off-putting. But this is the closest one to the, uh, in fact, here's an example of how it actually teaches you guitar. relatively speaking and they use uh, audio input for the guitar okay got it how did I end up in Finland <laughs> that's a good question family I would say that's the that's the answer <laughs> yeah so this is like a guitar hero that actually is going to show you and I like their interface it's colorful and uh, the bouncy ball is Funny, captivating, and then you're learning actual songs and things like that. Uh, but not only that, they have other apps, and uh, this is a kind of cool package. Um, even starting out with strumming chords and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool, and you get all for the one subscription of a family plan. However, uh, when I compare it, uh, there's some trade offs, and I don't want to get in too much into the pluses and minuses of each of these, but I'll just mention the other ones. Like Flowkey, made in Germany. I don't know that where it made has mattered, but um, I think it's a German company. It's just kind of interesting aside, but uh, this one focuses on piano and repertoire. And, but the nice thing here, and it's really beautiful, the actually uh, human, humanistic performance, you get actual humans playing it. 
and uh, so we don't want to compete with this. There's a, it's got a really great repertoire. It displays the sheet music. It waits for you. You can tell I'm learning my left hand or my right hand. It'll wait for you to play the note and then continue on. That's a good thing, uh, crucial. And then Simply Piano, I use. If I click the sponsored links, then we get all this UTM stuff. I just want to Simply Piano. Simply Piano is also, whoops, a family of apps. Darn it. Control C. And maybe you've seen these as well. So I'm keeping my eye to all of these and there's numerous apps and I'll probably put these in the market analysis and how we're gonna distinguish ourselves from it. But this one's really fun. This is, they're based in the United States, I think Silicon Valley maybe. Um, if I looked at up, uh, so you get piano, guitar, singing, tuning, and even a drawing app. Uh, we have the family plan so that there's uh, multiple profiles and it uses MIDI input or microphone input, especially for the singing. You need the microphone, you don't have MIDI <laughs> uh, or guitar, don't have, typically don't have MIDI. But piano, I really recommend if you have a MIDI device, and they recommend this as well. You hook it up to the app using MIDI. That's why we're going to focus on MIDI. In this piano app, the, the microphone, especially with polyphonic instruments that are playing multiple notes at the same time, uh, are it's very difficult because uh, all the notes are actually stacked and interrelated. Uh, there's some like mathematics behind it, and acoustics, and they call it the harmonic series. And it's hard to pull it apart. It's computationally expensive, and even if you can pull it apart into these basic uh, Frequencies, it's hard to tell which note was responsible for what frequency when music is also based on this harmonic series. Uh, so I won't go too much into my really baseline understanding of acoustics, but suffice it to say, I think it's too complicated and the result is actually not always accurate and sometimes frustrating. So we're going to focus on MIDI. So these are the ones that are sort of big ones on the radar and focusing mostly around repertoire. But there are, they also have a little bit of like Simply Piano has some kind of scale practice and, uh, but we're gonna focus really heavily, we're gonna go kind of heavily into the technique aspect to complement these. Uh, and, uh, and these are all a compliment for an actual class or instructor. Uh, since I started taking this piano lessons, I'm already making like really great progress that uh, I really getting direct feedback and you know things that the app just can't really do as well as a person. All right, so we're good to go. We got started on the game design document and I've drafted this discussion. Um, So let's go ahead and post this to GitHub. Looking good. Crafting the game design document for our project. <laughs> Story and characters. I hadn't even thought of that, but uh, maybe characters would be good. And for example, Floki, Simply Piano, Musician, none of them really have a story. So that could be another differentiating. There is a... Um, there are numerous apps, of course, and there is one from Simply Piano that was designed for younger children, and it had some kind of, it had like Bach or somebody, or Beethoven perhaps, guiding you, but I don't think it had like literally a story. But you can, you know, we can do a Google search of just like piano learning app. Mm, musician, Simply Piano come up number one. There's, of course, video lecture lessons and flow key here is up high in the ring. Scoove I've tried as well. We got a free Scoove trial. Again, repertoire oriented. Mm. Piano Maestro is one. It's, all, it's from the same company, Simply Piano. It's a little older generation of software, so to speak. Um, geared towards younger children it's, it, it kind of shows its age and in, in, in the pedagogy as well it's a bit uh, i don't know interesting though it's uh, that's surprising there's the piano master so joy tunes is who makes simply piano you can see it's designed for younger children 
It sort of has a little fun character down here. It's teaching you sight reading and basic repertoire. Uh, it's good for piano teachers. They can use that with their students and track student progress and things. So we'll probably be looking at that, the progress part. Uh, they recommend having this MIDI input. It's really important. What is this? Is this the, yeah, same one. Uh, no, this is a different one. Works with synesthesia. Millions of songs to learn. Okay, it is the same one. One for the full. Oh, that's like a hardware device. Interesting. Piano Maestro USB. Okay. By Joy Tunes. Here it is. Oh, it's a PDF. Okay, anyway, we're getting off track here. But let's ask ChatGPT. To a GitHub discussion related to uh, so digital projects. Please write an introduction to a GitHub discussion relating to market analysis, such as encouraging discovery in comparison with existing digital products and tools. So we'll start everything with a discussion here, and we'll turn these into documents, of course, at some point. Uh, no, I haven't relied on GPT for the, um, the visual design, at least, um, in terms of like, designing the layout or whatnot, but I have used GPT to code the piano. Uh, I sort of decided where the piano would display on the screen. I think it was kind of conventional uh, to put the piano at the bottom. It's, I'm sure I'm not really putting a lot of thought into the design to be honest, but like Floki, for example, if you look at these images of these uh, piano learning apps, they're, well, Floki is actually showing sheet music on the bottom, but uh, a lot of times you'll have a video that'll show the main, what I would say, well, you're trying to learn it with Floki, you're trying to learn the piece and you're trying to learn sheet notation. And so in our app, we're trying to learn not sheet notation, but the keyboard. So you put sort of like the main thing you're trying to learn at the bottom and then supplementary material like a video or text along the top. And let's see. And if you watch a lot of you know YouTube videos or whatnot, you'll see piano at the bottom is a pretty common convention. Piano at the bottom here on Simply Piano. So that's about in piano here on the bottom with uh, Synesthesia. I think this is the Synesthesia app. Uh, common convention, so I just didn't reinvent anything there. Melodic shows it at the bottom. Yeah, it's just very... <laughs> And even with like software synthesizers and things like that, the the when you enable the piano view, it shows at the bottom. But then the key uh, step was to like, how do we generate the piano? What does it look like? Do do we have staggered keys? No, probably not at this point. It wasn't worth the effort. So GPT generated the code for that, as well as helped me with the programming. Uh, the fourth, this fourth one, the uh, Simply Piano, let's see, oh, the synest Synesthesia, yeah, there's a lot of videos on there, isn't, on uh, YouTube, for example, and just generally the technique, uh, well, the second Synesthesia is the blending of uh, uh, senses, but uh, Synesthesia is this, um, a lot of people are playing famous piano songs. It's the waterfall. I don't think maybe we'll take a waterfall approach. You know, it's very popular as you mentioned to learning scales and modes. Interesting. Yeah, I can I could think more about this. We're sort of like an open source synesthesia. Uh, I want it to wait for you though, so it'll pause the waterfall when the note comes up, and you play at your own speed and. You have to hit the correct note. We want to focus on accuracy. And it's a decent price, too. Very cool. Uh, so this is probably, uh, as you point out, famous and uh, probably our main 
uh, competitor, in other words. It's got finger number hints. We should probably um, aim for a similar user interface. I do, because fingering matters, like which hands for efficiency, in particular where you're going, uh, should uh, determine which sometimes fingers you're using, which combination. And what I want to know is how, to what extent does it focus on, you just load in music XML files, perhaps, and so you can put any arbitrary uh, lesson into music XML, which is a core thing we'll have to just uh, explore in this app as well. What's the format? How are we preparing the lessons and storing them? Is it some kind of JSON format? I don't want to reinvent something. Um, but yeah, plug in USB and load a MIDI file or a music XML file and then study. That's basically it, well, what I'm aiming for here. But the lessons should be <clears throat> in our app kind of built in. So you don't have to worry about that. You just plug your keyboard in and select it. I want to learn this today. That's pretty cool. They have music store. Now there, see that's very common to focus on the songs and repertoire, and there's you know money to be made there as well. And uh, uh, not only from individual sales in the case of synesthesia, but just the subscription model of your app. What gets people playing the piano is usually the songs. That's why people are there. So it makes a lot of sense. I don't want to necessarily compare or compete with that. I mean. Although, you know, it would be nice if we could sustain the project through some kind of revenue or donations or something. Maybe a small business formed around it, but uh, focus on learning technique is not as exciting, but it's essential. And that's where I'm at in my learning process. I need to learn technique. I have lots of repertoire from these other apps. But does it teach me scales? No. So then, you know, I could get a music, a MIDI, or make one with with uh, with um, not Audacity, with Muse Score, for example. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, we'll just pop this one in the chat just for comprehensiveness. And actually, I should be putting these in the game design document. Oh, sorry, I'm missing this scroll. Yeah, if it's just to beautify the play. Downside is you can't see the fingers. Ah, yeah, you don't know how to place them. That's a really important point that, yeah, it's so essential that you, especially when you're moving your hand, uh, like arpeggios, you do over and under or down, you do over or sometimes you hop, but then you hop to different combinations of fingers. Yeah, so we have to have some way of indicating those. So let's add a feature for that. We'll open this discussion. I think today is kind of a project management day. Where I'm just kind of trying to build the initiative, kind of get it out there, get the idea out into the public. Ask for help, you know, see what people are needing. So we will create a GitHub issue. Let's see, let me scroll down. Okay, please create. Um, specific uh, fingerings.
So yeah, the fingering matters, and uh, right now I'm learning the triadic versions, and in particular, I'm interested in uh, triadic harmony and composition. I think there's a lot of power into that mode of thinking in terms of triads and left and right hand combinations of them. Um, but what I'm getting at though is uh, I forgot I've lost my strain of thought and essentially we need to know the fingerings whether I'm in a sort of the classical so I'm right now learning the classical triad which is just basically these three fingers but if we want to do jazz triad you use these fingers so you leave your fourth finger up here for like the extensions the core extensions but I think there's an interesting world uh, in the jazz uh, music uh, and using these extensions and color tones and things but also coming back to triadic harmonies um, and combinations <clears throat> for like cinematic sound uh, there's a lot of power there and you know you just use regular even classical triad note uh, fingerings and you just place triads above one another in combination uh, or in uh, sequence and you make really interesting um, non-diatonic music that it sounds beautiful there's whole books written on uh, like the tonnets and uh, this new romanian neo romanian uh, transformational music composition uh, based on just triads triad transformations okay let's just see what this says and put it in grammarly just so it's uh, we can make it more succinct and uh, darn it see now it's back to this please <laughs> remember our it's just so embedded in the model that people are using the wrong. Making note about these heading levels. Very cool. All right. No need. Okay. So first, we'll just go through the grammar and uh, especially which is both classical. So the blue ones are just making it more succinct. The green ones are um, making it more engaging. It seems like okay, okay, and using less common words, methods like triads. Yeah, okay. Engaging could be just simplifying the language, clear and straightforward. Yeah, or making it more semantic this isn't necessarily a more simple word but uh, it's more meaningful unmistakable wow okay and then I don't need the uh, intro and outro oh cool so we we'll just get this delete that and see if we want to simplify the language a little bit Oh, this is the uh, GitHub issue, of course. So we'll open that issue. I'm using this trackball mouse which kind of makes things so difficult to select accurately and this might not be used for much longer I started this whole conversation uh, so I would learn more about the architecture and how to decompose the um, game into a better scene tree because i have everything in one scene right now and it's uh, not going to carry us very far and it's named piano display so it should probably just display the piano as well as like the notes being being played which means like i would need um 
some kind of a display up here and as well a global game state and perhaps a menu you know to where you can navigate and select uh, scenes in other words lessons all right so, but this is good project management stuff is really important let's collaborate in market research sounds fun Yeah, see, so you got the headers right here, so it just loses the thread every so often. There's like a saddle-shaped context window where the most recent and initial um, conversation is given more um, weight, and the stuff in the middle gets a little bit less weight from my basic understanding of the moving window the context window precious precious all right journey market analysis all right so let's make that a little less Who's he? What's it? I don't know what. Huh. Yeah, and I'll paste these links here because this is literally just getting insight and uh, participation from the community. Uh, let's make it, what was the one I used? Simplify it, make it simpler. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna create a new discussion here. Got it. I maybe wanna personalize these. Research and development section, perhaps. New oh, sections, interesting. R and D, I don't know if that's a great category. Science, science. All right, now we will go back to discussions and create one in the research and development section. Pasting in the title. Gamification is a real word. Freemium is a real word. So let's begin. Have you used or come across any digital piano learning tools? What did you find impressive or lacking in them? Start the discussion. Okay, yeah, I'll paste these into the chat. Anybody who's got some information, let's, let's take a look. We don't have to worry about any form or structure or anything like that. We're just discovering right now. That's basically like a brainstorm at this point. All right, this is nice. Oh, wait. Shoot. Did I? Yeah, I did insert it. Oh, okay. The journey. Let the journey begin. We strive. So this is interesting. The um, large language models are not built or maintained by Grammarly, and so it has a different style and uh, grammar and all these rules uh, that it applies more separately. What was that? I saw something flash. Maybe I lost a follower. I don't know. I don't know. Let me just... <laughs> I'll edit this real quick. Just 
to grammar fixes. Excellent. Yep. Synesthesia. So I don't know, should I just create a list? Um, let me think for a second. Um, what would the product name be? Oh man, really, really good question. I'm open to suggestions. Piano practice doesn't sound very good. Actually, actually, I do have an idea for it. Uh, I'll have to look. I forgot. I, re I registered a domain. Something related to moose. That's, ah, oh, you know, we could have a mascot, a moose learning the piano. That's a really great idea, actually. Make it, like, engaging and finish. Because <laughs> it's like sort of, we have like meese here, mooses. <laughs> I think so, at least. Hirvi, we call them. Hirvi. Hirvi. Here we moose. It is <laughs> great. Thank you. Uh, do other. Uh, oh boy. Quick hunting. Uh, do other projects have a moose mascot? What I think something else does have, probably have a moose mascot. But ah, oh, so great idea. <laughs> uh, wait, what am I doing here? I'm losing my brain. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm creating the list. <laughs> <laughs> that was just such a great idea, though. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll actually I'll open a discussion about the mascot. Choose a mascot and project name. The, the project name is sort of like a messing around with something to, relating to gym or coach uh, because it's sort of like helping you get stronger and get your technique, get more. It's about muscle memory. Yeah, true. Mooses are clumsy, and that's, I feel like a moose when I'm playing the piano. I really, I'm so clumsy right now. I'm trying to do inversions, and I'm like, dude, dude. Oh, like you can't see the notes. But <laughs> so it's like helping my moose, my inner moose, <laughs> become less clumsy. <laughs> that's the relation, perhaps. I don't know. Good question. I'll put that as an open one. So real quick here. Um, simply panel, of course. Hello, simply. And I don't know if I, it would be nice if the um, GitHub thing would automatically give me nice URLs here, but I'm just gonna put them in. In no particular order, they should be in alphabetical order. And perhaps you need even categorization. Hello, so simply panel, synesthesia. So Floki, Simply Piano, Scoove, and of course the Finnish Famous, um, which I can't remember, we were just talking about it, is uh, Musician. Yes, but should we have a mascot? I think generally, <laughs> it doesn't have to be in the name, but a mascot helps, especially, you know, maybe kids want to play this. This is probably mainly oriented towards adults or learners who are like getting interested in technique in addition to, as a compliment to 
uh, repertoire, which again, we won't try to compete in that domain. There's too much complexity there, and not only in getting the sheet music and rendering it, but also the licensing and copyright stuff is just frankly a mess. Unfortunately. Come on, see, I can't get right there. Scoob, musician. Oh man, you about to on me. Again, I don't want to complain about about musician stuff. I just haven't chosen that one despite them being from Finland. So get the link for them, musician.com. Link for them. And you know, this might just be interesting to somebody who's uh, looking for these kind of tools. That's the wrong thing. Oops, I did it again. Which one do I have pasted? I forgot already. Musician. This thumbball just doesn't have the right coarseness. Simply piano. I can just type that. Like sometimes it just gets stuck a little bit, and then I try to move it just a little bit, and it like jumps. But here it's smooth, and this way it's getting stuck. Smooth, stuck. So if I approach from the left, then I get a smoother scoop. But I'm trying to scroll a little. Here we go. So approach from the left, then I have more accuracy flow key. And later, you know, we'll create a uh, comparison document of what they do and don't do, as well as how they would uh, compare with the goals and uh, aspirations of this project. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. What did I do? I forgot to close the parentheses here. There we go. No need. Yes, I think the project should have a mascot. What do you think? Polls? Um, <laughs> research and development? Questions and answers? Q&A would kind of let people vote. Question, choose a mascot. Answer, you can add, suggest one. Each answer should only be one mascot and then... Uh, I think they can be threaded and you can talk about the pros and cons of each one of them. <laughs> okay, so let's have ChatGPG help me write this though. Keeping in mind our proper header. Let's, let's header levels. Let's create a The hoof of the moose, it's tough. Yeah, right, that's the main thing that's awkward and my hands feel like hooves sometimes. <laughs> Imagine a moose seen from above. They might end up playing with their antlers. And you know, you know, actually, that what's coming to mind here is we don't have to settle on one. You can have our progression system <laughs> be based on animals or <laughs> something like that. I was doing this uh, at swimming lessons. I was giving uh, some swimming lessons for the kids. And, uh, you know, you start off like a, 
uh, a turtle and you end up you know progressing through levels and you're like later you're swimming like a dolphin uh, so you start off maybe like a moose here you're playing like hooved animal and eventually you get to play more <laughs> I don't know animal level this idea yeah that's true and uh, we don't want to make people feel offended or insulted by like saying oh you're playing like a moose uh, or a monkey or something like that but essentially <laughs> yep yeah, you know, let's stick with the mascot idea though I think it's kind of cool humorous and hopefully not insulting really it's not that's not the intention here and if it is it's like <laughs> we will reassess the uh, idea this is just an idea but it's fun yeah hey welcome Stiggs sometimes the moose has more fun yeah that's true and as they get better at playing I think <laughs> it becomes more fun so let me double check here let's put this um, uh, through Grammarly of course I did that discussion and we'll just use our Grammarly sketch pad here a <laughs> scratch pad and uh, take off the leading and trailing things like uh, prefix and suffix or whatever that uh, GBT adds saying yeah I'll help you out there all right fits our project well sounds good using uh, straight or curly uh, quotes somehow it mixes those I'm not sure how uh, so here's one that makes it more clear uh, just need to or you can say must or should uh, they should you know don't be so uh, paired mascots let's see the mascots you like your favorite mascots I like that your favorite mascots is more clear to me sorry I've been going through these suggestions really quick but let's take a look at what they're suggesting uh, whether it's a musical animal or a fantastical creature or something more different, let your imagination run wild. And this is saying, let your imagination run wild, whether it's a musical animal, a fantastical creature, or something completely different, period. So I think this is nice. Let your imagination run wild. So we we'll rewrite that. And in comma, usage. Let's get creative. Yeah, I think this one's ready to go. So this was a Q and A. Ask the community for help. Okay. <clears throat> Very cool. <laughs> the moose was just such a great idea whether or not that's the official mascot it was you know these are generative things that one idea spawns a bunch of other ideas all right so here's this discussion sometimes bring musek uh, copilot AI yeah, needs <laughs> to work in GD script that's true uh, we're having trouble is it uh, it doesn't quite keep up or at least GPT-4 is having troubles keeping up with the changes in GD script especially you know, go to 4, 4.1. There's been some changes and our even the suggested code doesn't work well. So I'll take a quick break and let's go to the code. Thanks, Stiggs, for the uh, mention of the GD script. Let's do some actual live coding today. This has been interesting, though, from, a, uh, again, project management and community um, engagement perspective. This is an essential part of the project. And as you can see, the links here, if you'd like to check out the source code. I'll just take a quick break, refresh my drinks, have a bio break, and we'll come back and we'll actually do some coding. Maybe we'll pick one of these issues that we created. I'll just think for a moment if there's another issue, I need to put a placeholder there uh, so we can come back to it. I'll be right back.
Okay. Sorry for the delay there, but I got everything set up now. Hmm. So we only have a couple of issues. Um, I think what I would like to work on is just showing the note name as text. Which I didn't define here, but uh, Okay, so basically, we want to start working on uh, displaying things more at a level of abstraction above just the MIDI level. So we want to put these into pitch names, which MIDI is essentially numbers that correspond roughly to a large piano, more than 88 keys. But each of those numbers is um, associated with a Western pitch. So like C4 would be the fourth C or the middle C on the keyboard. And those pitches are composed into other things like chord scales, chord inversions, stuff like that. But first step is just to display them and see what we encounter and what difficulties we have. So let's add an issue for this. All right, see, back to this, the GitHub issue is really hard-coded to use these dang <laughs> header levels. It's so, because there's so many GitHub issues that are created with the improper markup. I don't mean to be too bit pedantic about it, but I just wish it wasn't such a pervasive bad practice. And it doesn't, it's not unique to GitHub. It's just a problem with web development in general, people misusing headers, but it's just percolated into the GitHub markdown. Oh, sorry, we need to run this through the grammar checker. All right, to enhance the educational value and interaction of our piano learning tool, to advance our piano learning tool's educational value, I like that. Uh, we will show the names of the notes being played. I don't think the terms is more common there. Remove that comma and remove the optionally the note the pitch class. What is it? real time? It's in hyphenated. Okay. We will shoot classes for each note letter. Oh, I see. No, it's a bit confused on the terminology. Okay, so, so ensure the display is clear, non-intrusive, and dynamically updates. Hmm. As notes are played, I think there's a tense, it's matching the tense, past tense. Removing redundancy. Uh, yeah. Brevity. Note playing is one unit, a semantic unit, so you hyphenate it. 
All right, interesting. This is teaching me a lot about English grammar. I've been using this Grammarly for a while. It's a very useful tool. And we don't need to label the description as a description, just pop that in there. But these other sections are more meaningful than names. So this is what I believe I'll be focusing on today, the GD script time is nigh. Wait a minute, do I have a message that I missed here? I got two messages. What? Okay, two messages from the same bot. So let's assign myself. I can do it. I think so. With the help of GD, uh, GPT, I really don't know much about Godot. Now pitch catch class calculation is basically the note name without the octave. Oh, cool. Let's do it. So, um, given that GPT already knows our goal here, what we're trying to create, let's get it to help us with that. Okay, so again, I'm going to uh, actually see how much memory it has. Now, I mentioned this saddle shaped or sort of a convex or is it concave? Concave. Um, shape of the context window where the earliest part of the conversation like the first re call and response uh, and the latest parts are given more weight than the middle parts all this stuff we've done in here i don't remember where i learned this or read this but essentially the code is here and somewhere close uh, sort of starting to get in the middle where i paste it in our code let's see how well it remembers that so given the project structure and code in piano display GD. Let me just tell you, I'd like to work on this issue. I'd like to work on the issue to display the um, note names and picture. Given the project structure and the code in the GD, how do you propose I proceed? Should EG, should I That would contain the that would or is that premature? I'm essentially, I'm going to have to break this into more scenes, right? Even the actual project structure, I don't know what's a good practice in Godot. I kind of just started putting everything in the same level, the same folder. So maybe we could look at that. So yeah, it says uh, we have options. Given our existing piano display GD and the structure of your Godot project, there are a couple of approaches you could take to implement the feature for displaying names and pitch classes. Uh, the decision largely depends on how modular and scalable you want your project to be. Here are two approaches. I don't want to kind of prematurely optimize or scale, but I know we're going to have to dis uh, restructure at some point. You can't just put everything in one scene. So extend the current piano display GD scene. That's the most like direct and pragmatic. You can start by extending that uh, the script to include the functionality for displaying note names and pitch classes. That now splitting out the script though is a bit more tedious and complicated than if um, splitting out for example the scene tree where you can just decompose uh, a child so uh, i think i would like to not make this script more complicated at this point it's straightforward and keeps everything within one scene which is easier to manage for small projects here's a rough outline add a, a ui node in your piano display scene <clears throat> Add the UI node such as label and rich text label above the piano keys. This node will be used to display the note names and pitch classes. Update the script 
to update the text of this node whenever a key is pressed. So that is pretty straightforward. Or we can restructure. If you anticipate your project growing in complexity, it might be better to restructure by adding a parent scene. This allows for better separation of concerns and makes your project more scalable. Yeah, now the reason I'm thinking this might be a good time to do it is so that I don't tangle too much code into one script and then need to refactor it out. And I know in the short term, we're going to need another scene, for example, a menu scene to load and select the scene, uh, the lesson scene, or some kind of um, generic lesson that lets you uh, pass an argument of the um, MIDI file that you're learning or, or whatever it is. We, I don't know yet how we'll structure the educational content content music xml midi or some kind of json so we'll have a main scene piano display as a child and a new text display script communication ensure the piano display script communicates with the parent scene update the note names this might involve using signals or direct function calls ah, okay so that's where we'll encounter signals Performance, make sure the text updates are efficient. Uh, UI clarity, the text display should uh, clear, not obstruct the view of the piano keys. That's a good point. I think you can position scenes within the parent. Scalability, consider future features you might want to add, like the menu navigation. Decide the best approach. Well, we're in a branch. I feel safe about kind of making a move right now that I might discard. So what I'll do is uh, create these scenes. One other quick question. Uh, what folder structure uh, is common? So I'd like a simple conventional project structure that might not exist so much in Godot in game development in general, but I'm coming from web development and using frameworks like Django where you have clear project structure guidelines and you kind of follow it and you don't have to really think about that too much. You just decide that early in the project at least in your own convention or a community convention and use that. Now here's some very basic interesting suggestions. The uh, assets is a common convention. I see that in even in the um, Flutter world, we use assets and yeah, scenes. That's basically where we'll put our scenes and code uh, scripts. So let's let's follow this. Let's adopt this. It docs too, of course. Special folders. Res is the root of your project, so assets or scenes should be here. Project Godot. Project configuration should be in the root. Autoload isn't a physical folder, but in your project settings, you can configure autoload scripts. Very cool. Keep it intuitive. Consistent naming. So let's uh, let's start that. What's the one, it's not kebab case, but the underscore, what case is that? Snake case? I just want uh, somebody who's familiar with Godot development to kind of come in and see our project and, and know where things are and, and have clear um, naming conventions and style. Without like inventing my own conventions, I don't know. Pascal case, okay, camel case. Pascal case says the okay, starting. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, it looks like script naming convention. Pascal case. So check. It's common practice to name scripts using Pascal case, and uh, each word starts with yeah. 
with a capital letter, the convention is widely used in programming languages for class names. And since each GD script file is essentially a class, it fits well. Yeah, that's an important distinction. And one that's kind of taken me a while to get used to is like this is a class without the class definition. It is uh, itself right here is the line of inheritance and then everything else is a member uh, property of this. In Python, we have like these namespaces that are similar, but I define classes within that. And these are methods of the class. Interesting. Snake case scenes are often used for uh, scene file names, <clears throat> like piano display. This means letters are lowercase with underscores separating the words. It's common convention for names in various contexts, as it ensures readability and compatibility across different file systems. So you can't hit spaces in here. General best practices, clarity and descriptiveness, avoid special characters, match the context. Okay, so it sounds like our naming convention is good. Let's just create a new folder called assets. And should icon. Go in the assets folder. I don't know. We'll go to find that. Placing icon SVG in the assets folder is a good practice, particularly if you aim to maintain a well-organized project structure. Okay, what happens if I do that though? Does something break or do I need to configure something? If I run it, is it able to find that? It looks like it. All right, so that worked. When I did that, I noticed a little dialogue appear and it, like it refactored the project to point to the new icon location. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to go back to this naming, uh, this convention. Scenes. So that goes there, and I'm pretty sure the Godot scenes. Oh, and there's scripts. Weird. Okay, okay. I can see, you know, due to the different naming conventions that even if I did keep them together, they would kind of separate in the same folder. I'm just double checking that. <clears throat> wow, this is giving me some very thorough answers. In Godot development, both approaches, keeping scripts and scenes in separate directories or maintaining scripts in the same directory as their corresponding scenes are used, and each has its own advantages. The choice often depends on the scale of the project and the personal or team preferences. Keeping scripts and scenes in separate directories manages organization. This method keeps all scripts centralized, making it easier to locate and manage script files. That makes sense. You don't have to like, traverse your whole scene tree to find the related script, but you end up probably building a a mirrored uh, script tree, uh, tree. I wouldn't imagine at some point you'd keep all your scripts at the same level of uh, file system, maybe. It can simplify version control by separating code changes from scene changes. Interesting. I don't see how that works if I... Hmm. Or why that really matters because the changes are in already different files. Hmm. I don't know. 
Uh, navigation. It may require more navigation when working with both scene and script files simultaneously. Coupling, it's less intuitive to see which scripts are associated with which scenes, especially in a large project. Hmm. I don't have a reference. I don't have a preference here. I could do a poll, but I only have one person checking it out. But uh, poll. programming points. Let's leave it open for five minutes, three minutes. I don't want to be lingering too much on this decision. Interesting. I've never done a poll before. <clears throat> I'll just continue reading this and get some feedback. Uh, so ease of access, having this script in the same, did I already do that? Same directory as the scene makes it easier to find and understand the relationship between them. Modularity it supports a more modular approach where each scene and its script can be thought of as self-containing unit. Hmm, that's an interesting point. Disadvantages scalability. In very large projects, this method can lead to a cluttered directory structure with many files in the same folder. Okay. Uh, script reusability. If scripts are reused across different scenes, this structure might create confusion or duplication. Yeah, I can see that. In Python projects, for example, we have like common directory where you put common uh, things, script or scenes, but okay. So common practices and considerations. Project size. For smaller projects, keeping scripts and scenes together might be more convenient. For larger projects, separate directories can help manage complexity. Script reusability. If you have scripts that are reused by multiple scenes, it might make more sense to keep them in a centralized scripts directory. Team preferences. Well, I'm the sole developer here. I don't have a preference either. Consistency. Whatever you do, just be consistent. Stick to the chosen structure. No one size fits all answer to this. Both methods are common. Uh, methods are common in Godot development. You might even find some projects that use a mixture of both. Depending on the specific requirements, of uh, different pro parts of the project, consider the scale of your project, the nature of your own scenes and scripts, and your personal team or workflow of preferences when deciding. All right, so the poll is still going. Keep the scenes and scripts together or apart? The assets was a clear one. We need to keep our assets here. We'll wait a little bit longer for that poll to finish. <clears throat> scripts characters scenes levels scripts levels shaders we're not using add-ons we're not using quite materials we're not quite using docs docs is a good one to add i think docs let's add that docs and we'll put the roadmap in the docs nice so getting some structure and organization started i'll vote haven't received any other votes yet. Poll is closing momentarily. Evacuation complete. Evacuation. Evacuation com Evacuation complete. Same directory. <laughs> right. Only reason I did it is just uh, for simplicity since we're kind of a small project right now. And we can refactor later. That just helps me right now. So yeah, it doesn't have built-in uh, Git. You have to install a plugin. That's just kind of a bummer. 
kind of a bummer. Good do version control. Let me just double check here. Here we. <clears throat> and let's just see if it has a quick. Uh, as of July 2023, there is only a Git plugin available. All right, official Git plugin. I'd like to install it from I've installed git and you have to put in your add-ons So sure, and then how uh, do I just do a git ignore for the add-ons? Let's think about that later. <laughs> Let me make sure the project runs, actually, now that I think about that. <clears throat> window a tiled uh, window manager and even like kept those together when I dragged one it resizes the other that's crazy mm. so we're just gonna run the game real quick make sure it runs with this refactor looks like it does I can press things and it just still works okay uh, so we'll get add a uh, well dot Good, we've got that. Now, closing some things out, keep that open and just stick with the issue I'm on, I'm working on. So it looks like we're a bit over two hours. This has been a decent um, live stream so far and we're gonna get to some code after two hours. Did a little bit of project management, had some nice discussions. Scenes. Sounds like a good plan, especially if it aligns with your project's scale and workflow preferences. Using a shared scenes folder for both scenes and scripts can be very effective, particularly in projects where there are scenes in corresponding scripts are tightly coupled. Here are a few tips. Naming conventions. Maintain naming conventions. Player scene, player GD. Oh. Interesting. So now we're not, now we're not gonna use cam, camel case. Uh, we're gonna use Pascal case, I mean, not uh, snake case. Rename. Yeah. It still works? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll deal with that. Oops. That way they move together, they are sorted together. Uh, 
the script headers include a brief comment in the header section of each script file indicating its purpose. Okay, and this is nice. Let's do this. Uh, organize your scenes folder with subfolders if necessary. For instance, you might have subfolders like characters, UI levels, etc. Scene organization within Godot editor, you can utilize the scene tabs effectively to switch between the scene and its script. Version control with scripts and scenes together, it's straightforward to track changes, documentation conserving, or readme. We do have that. So let's refactor the project. Lesson display, I guess we call it lesson. So ask for him help with the refactoring. Refactoring your project to include a parent scene that manages both the piano display and the upcoming lesson display is a great idea for better organization and modularity. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to proceed with this refactoring. This is what I need because I don't really have much of a clue <laughs> to do how to do uh, Godot specific stuff. I can refactor Python projects pretty easily and it's not like night and day different, uh, but there are some subtleties. So this is like having a, not only an assistant, but a tutor or a guide. This is really helpful. So parent scene set up, create the parent scene and uh, nodes uh, main scene dot tscn. All right. So it's kind of like the Python convention. You call it main or main scene ts. And I'm noticing that you don't kind of prefix suffix the uh, name scene. Like I don't have piano display scene. So I'm just gonna call it main dot scene uh, invalid root name characters have been replaced great as a 2d scene interesting I'm not sure the difference but I'll go with that we be doing this file format at least Piano display, main. All right, now integrate the piano display. Yeah, call it main. Integrate the piano display. So instance the piano display as a child of a new parent scene. You can do this by dragging the piano display scene into the viewport of your scene tree, the parent display. Okay. Let's call it main. And then I can instances it says okay how do we do this piano display just like that and then we go here now what happens if i play it still works wow cool <clears throat> now out of curiosity I hit play I'm going to project settings. I'm going to pick the main scene now. Maybe it's going to tell me to do that here in a second. Um, adjustments. Uh, prepare the lesson display. Okay, we'll do that in a moment. Scripting the parent scene. Parent scene script. Attach a new script to the parent scene, for example, main.gd. The script will handle the orchestration between the panel display and the lesson display. Functionality transfer. Depending on your current setup, you may want to transfer some global functionality or scene management logic from the piano display to the main GD. I think we'll use the um, main GD as a listener for the MIDI because it's going to have to manage that state and send it both into the piano display as well as the text. Test integrated setup. Future integration of lesson display. Yeah. Update scenes, documentation, conclusion. And I don't know if you deserve to. Do I need to configure the project main scene? Oh, 
Oh. Weird. Rename that. What happened there? Main.tscn. I just think there's a project setting. Yes, you should configure your Godot project to use a new main scene. Uh, open project settings, go to project settings, navigate to application settings. Okay, that's where I was looking for application settings. There I am. Run, ah, main scene. Ah, okay, okay. Yep. On the left side, it's like run, select the main scene in the run settings. I save and close, test the configuration. Let's see what happens. Still works. Very good. Okay. So it looks like our project changed and we have a new scene. Pass into or shared among child scenes. Essentially, we want the MIDI logic to happen at some level of abstraction or perhaps a singleton with the auto load, I think is what they call those. I don't know if it's necessary for an auto load, but uh, moving common functionality like MIDI event handling to a higher level in your Godot project is a great idea for efficiency and modularity. You have two primary options using the main scene or creating a singleton auto load. Each has its own advantages, and the choice depends on the specific needs of your project. You can move the MIDI event handling code to the script attached to your main scene. This is a good approach if MIDI functionality is closely tied to the scenes and their interactions. I don't believe it is. I don't think it's fundamentally necessary for transitioning scenes or interacting between scenes, but it is shared, so in a way it's... It's essential for the app, but not the scenes, not the wiring, so to speak. Passing events. In main GD where the event is detected, you can pass this information to the child scenes, like piano display, then need it. Use signals or direct function calls to communicate the MIDI events to the relevant child scenes. And then you update the child scenes <clears throat> to receive and process the MIDI data. Option two, creating a singleton auto load. For more global accessibility, and if the MIDI functionality is used across multiple scenes independently or simultaneously, which it will be, I think the text and keyboard displays are prime examples of that, but also we might have a scene for the audio, I don't know, probably for like the, if we make the sound. Uh, go to uh, create a new script called MIDI Handler GD. This is where... It, uh, we might just add a script as well. So we're doing a hybrid <laughs> approach, I guess. Scenes and scripts. I uh, hope that's not too confusing. Create new script. MIDI handler.gd. Uh, yeah. A 
node default object empty. Hmm. Subs for both testing. Node or I don't know the difference between the node and object template, so we'll ask. It'll be G, uh, GD script for your MIDI ha GD handler singleton. The choice between node and object. As a base class, depends on the specific needs of your MIDI handling functionality. Here's a brief overview of when to use each. Using node as a base class, uh, scene interaction. If your MIDI handler in, uh, needs to interact with scenes or other node-based functionality in Godot, like emitting signals, using timers, etc., node is appropriate choice. Lifecycle methods. Node provides lifecycle methods like ready, process, and physics process, which are useful. Object is a base class, simplicity and efficiency. If your MIDI handling is straightforward and doesn't require features like uh, of node, the object is more lightweight. Background processing. Object is suitable for background processing or utility-like functionality, which sounds fitting for MIDI handler <coughs> that doesn't need to interact with the scene tree. If uh, So the key is like, how are we going to pass the, the data from the object? It sounds like an object is a good approach, uh, but then I don't have like signals or something. Recommendation. In most cases for MIDI handler, especially if it primarily manages data or background processes without needing to interact with the scene tree, object would be a suitable okay, case example. I do the MIDI stuff. However, if you find that you need to specify features in, of a node later on, you can always refactor to extend the node instead. Oh, okay, so it's pretty easy. Uh, to facilitate communication between your MIDI handler, singleton, and scenes like piano display, you can use signals in Godot. Signals are a powerful feature in Godot, uh, allowing different parts of your game, like nodes or scripts, to communicate with each other in a decoupled way. Here's how you can set this up. Define the signals in the MIDI handler. If your MIDI handler script defines signals that correspond to MIDI, a extending object, interesting. You may want to broadcast, for example, you might have signals for MIDI note on and MIDI note off. Okay, so let's let's do this object. Interesting. And you can refactor to node just by changing that line of code, I think. Uh, and you emit them. Handle MIDI input. Whoa. So connect the signal to the panel display. MIDI handler connect. MIDI note on to a function. Handle many events in the panel display. Implement. All right. So I think we're going to try this out. Again, we're in Git. We're in revision control. So I can change my mind here. We can move safely. I can delete this file. I can change the inheritance. So let's just go for that. MIDI handler.gd. I'll take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll um, we'll implement uh, just a MIDI handler that prints the output to the console. And we'll load that into our main, uh, actually not as our main scene, into, we'll load it as a, a, an auto load and see if we get some output that can then be used in the piano display. All right, thanks for your patience and I'll be right back.
Okay. Sounds like we're on the right path here. I have a script, MIDI handler, GD. I thought I picked uh, object. Anyway, that's how easy it is to refactor, I guess. <clears throat> we'll add our signals. I'm just going to ask it, uh, GPT essentially what I don't understand is then what is the lifecycle method like process uh, in a scene or node will have this process that gets called continuously um, <clears throat> where do I move the MIDI and it has this ready hook as well Does it have life cycles? Yeah, and here's our handlers. I think it even showed, it still has awareness. Mm, not quite. So it's not remembering the structure of our code. Well, let's, let's just start with one thing. How do I write the script and get it um, processing the middle MIDI data so I can print it to a console? To structure your MIDI handler or script with the provided MIDI related code, you'll need to refactor the code into a singleton pattern and set up signal emissions for the MIDI event. So we get our signal declarations, our constants, and initialize it. Process MIDI input. Handling input events since MIDI handler is not a node, it cannot directly receive input callback. You need to manually pass input events to it. Define the methods to process your input events. Calling MIDI handler from scenes. In scenes that need to process MIDI input, like piano display, you have to manually forward the input events to the MIDI handler. Oh, okay. And that's why it's independent of one another. Okay. I see. That sounds good. And I suppose we would just pass in the the input from the main scene and then subscribe the child scenes, the piano display and the note display and potentially the sound uh, player, audio player or whatever. Okay. No need. I think this is going to work though. All right. Uh, 
MIDI NRG D. So we've got the signals defined. Oh, I might as well just copy this all and paste it all. Copy and paste, but just read it and understand it. Initialize the MIDI input when the singleton is is created. And we have a function here that'll process MIDI inputs. I could call this process input because we're distinguishing it here. We're taking an input event and we're <clears throat> checking if it's MIDI at this level. Anyway, process input is fine. Okay, so then in our scene, our main scene should have a script. Main GD function input. Ah, yeah, so I need to register it. I'll just get this real quick. Project settings, auto load. May handler. So I add the may handler, enable that, <clears throat> and then 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 we want to print. Save this, and there is may handler. A function for printing emit signal MIDI note on. And we're actually checking the velocity as well, which I don't think is necessary, but it could be an interesting metric. How smooth is your velocity? Hmm. Interesting. Pitch message. All right. Now, in the piano display, I had this nice print uh, thing. Print MIDI, print MIDI info. We'll just move that out. See if that breaks something. Print MIDI. All right, so we're not using that. That's good. And I'll come back over to MIDI handler, and I'll just. I don't know if you have to. If it'll hoist it up if I define it after it to use print MIDI info. It's a private method, process MIDI input. So it's going to take MIDI event or input event MIDI. So we'll just do that. One thing I'm missing here, it would be nice. <coughs> is um, Copilot helping me autocomplete these things. I think at this point I should have something. Huh. Okay, these are perhaps issues with um, GPT-4's knowledge of Godot 4. So you have to inherit apparently the auto load from node. Okay. So that question is, I can put that one aside. Let's see what happens. Condition info node is true, continuing. All right, I don't know what that means. Parser, identifier, MIDI handler, not declared in this current scope. Let me just run it again, or can I clear those? Yeah. Sweep them away, try running it. And identifier, MIDI handler, not declared in the current scope. I might have missed a step. How do I stop? Uh, so I've, con I've configured it as an auto load. Maybe I... 
Okay, so just warnings, project, settings. Let me just try removing it, adding it again. I don't know if that was probably not necessary, but here we go. Closing that. Let's try running it again, stack trace. So I can... Okay, I must have missed a step. All right, so you define. Thing went from node in the piano display or similar script function input. Uh, auto load configuration project settings auto load. Add the MIDI handler with a name like MIDI handler. Make sure that I've got the name correct. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see that. All right. So we've got to have the capitalization correct. Now we get it. Piano, and there's that. It's all working. Uh, so this display is because this is still existing in the piano, but um, the console back here is what I'm looking at. at the, this is the MIDI handler. It might even say where it's printing it from, but uh, controller value is coming from the MIDI handler.gd. Nice, good progress. Okay, so we'll commit this, get status. Auto load to call. Excellent, excellent. Now we're going to use that in the piano. Oh, we're in the main GD. It's already being used. Now we need to wire the signals. Uh, so what I'll ask is for some help with here. Essentially, we will take this input out of it. We're no longer processing input at this level. Now it will break in a way. And we don't need to initialize the MIDI handler anymore. Very good. Now, signals. Connect. Uh, now this is an internal method, so I think I have to make it public because I don't see it listed here. Save those. Or, hmm. So I configured the auto load. Now I need to configure the list, listener. What's that called again? Piano display, handle me to note on. And it's taking a MIDI note. I might need to refactor those.
So they pass in a MIDI note instead of the event. Ah, shoot. Hit stop and there we go. To connect the MIDI handler signals to the piano displays methods, you need to set up the signal connections either through a code or the Godot editor. Since MIDI handler is an auto-loaded singleton, you can directly connect its signals to any scene. This is weird though. The, the subscriber should manage the connections. One thing that I find weird, it's an inversion of control. The publisher doesn't care, is not, shouldn't be aware of the subscribers. Uh, ah, it's my piano display scene. Okay, good. Define signal handlers in piano display. Good. And your piano display GD script ensure that you have the methods defined to handle many things. Yes. Oh, well, that's what we do. But connect the signals in the piano display. In the ready function of the piano display GD. Okay, good, good. Uh, connect the signal of the MIDI this MIDI handler. Okay. All right. Now, so in our ready. And cannot pass a value of type string as integer. Yeah, so that's the interesting thing. So I need to take a look at what this is returning. Forwarding the input events to the MIDI handler. Remember, for MIDI handler, the pro to process MIDI events, you need to forward input events to it. So I'm already doing that. Additional considerations, error checking, scene independence, and dynamic considerations. Okay, so the MIDI note on signal Two should be callable, but it's piano display. Okay. <sighs> That's weird. So, where was that? Um, Stack trace here. Let me just move this out of the way. Uh, so we get a stack trace. At this line, argument two should be callable. Invalid argument for connect function, argument two should be callable. So, but it is res scene piano display.gd. So in our piano display, So there's perhaps a different order of the scenes. Let's go to the docs here. Connect signal name, callable name, flags. Okay. Connects a signal by the name to a callable. And I, I guess the self is implicit then. Oops. That's kind of interesting. Or would I say self dot? Because that's a string. This won't work either, I, I suppose. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Hopefully my... Uh, <clears throat> I think the string is not the callable. I think it's this, self.handle MIDI note on, and self.handle MIDI note off. Hopefully it's passing the right type of argument. I like this though. I think this is an improvement that they've moved away from a string definition and uh, towards these actual callables or actual definitions, like the references in other words. Uh, so you get better type hinting and uh, help from the IDE and stuff like that. Okay, does it work? Okay, so we're still logging it out. That's good. So it's just not handling, I'm either not handling the right information to it but let's take out this um, permit info. We don't need this anymore. Let's just put a comment there for a moment. And uh, it's a debugging thing. Now, 
And I don't need ma uh, main change. Piano display. Open in a new tab. Now why do I have this one? In a tab, but not that one, right? Can I just put it in a tab there? Anyway. Okay, so we got this going in there. What's being passed? MIDI note on. <clears throat> it should be getting the note. The note is huh. the MIDI note actually is MIDI note. Let's just call it everywhere the same thing. Maybe that's a problem. No, this is just passing an end to the argument. Single MIDI note on, MIDI note off. Get to MIDI note. And we don't need to pass the velocity anymore. That's one thing we're just not working with. As far as I recall, I can double check that. I think it was just making sure that um, somehow that a note was played. I don't know why. So now in the piano display, we have this callable. We don't need this process anymore for the time being, at least. Generating notes is fine. Rendering the keyboard is fine. Mini notes helper is fine. Handle mini note. Key name equals mini notes. So let's print the mini notes. See what we're getting there. And same here, print mini note. Maybe it's not necessary. Just the key on should be fine. Key on. 64, 67, 68. Oh, and it's working. <laughs> Very good. Wow, so that worked. I'm just thinking about ahead, a couple moves ahead is um, right now we're passing in a note <clears throat> number and then uh, we have this helper MIDI note to key name and I think we're going to kind of use this in the text display as well. So I'm wondering if I can pass those as a signal or, or some kind of a um, a data class or whatever the equivalent an enum is, or not an enum, but a um, a struct as the callback uh, to the event. That way, the classes can use the properties. Everything is derived in the MIDI handler. You get the number, you get the note name. Uh, you might get the octave, the pitch class, all of that coming from the MIDI thing. It's all abstracted and centralized in one proper place. Because I think I want this key name in a couple of places. Let me just double check this. D5. Yeah, see, we're going to want that. It'll kind of tightly couple us to the... Uh, I'm sorry, to the... Many thing and this is a com composed uh, class. This is a, a composed of pitch class octave. And one other thing I forgot: <clears throat> what are you doing for sharps and stuff? And uh, G four and D five and stuff like that. We're using sharps. Okay, well this is a good step. But essentially, the piano display should only be focusing on display and rendering type of stuff. And uh, I believe that kind of computing or calculating the MIDI information should be handled by the MIDI class. That's the responsibility of the MIDI class.
so I'd like to move all the logic relating to the MIDI uh, to the MIDI handler class. Specifically, mapping MIDI numbers to note names, octave, etc., should be done by the MIDI handler, which should return a struct containing the keys uh, containing keys for the note information, such as pitch class, octave, velocity, and MIDI number. I don't know what else, but it all would be handled centrally, and we'll just return a common data format. It's sort of like a data class. It's a struct, I guess. With typing, I need to uh, also be adding type annotations here, something so I can get more help. Even the accidental might be something we would move out. I don't know. Get note info. This is nice though. Pitch class, octave, velocity, MIDI number. Yeah, and it has a little bit of problems there, but we'll fix that. I'll fix you, my pretty. So we'll come back here to the MIDI handler, and it's looking like it gives me the whole thing. So I want to be a little bit careful here with what I'm pasting in. <clears throat> so we're extending, uh, in our case, we're extending node. We declare our signals. And we send it note info now. Can I do multi cursor? Ah, yeah. I can. That's good, but... Uh, Middle note, middle, like a meadow. I'm gonna just type in the wrong thing to begin with. All right, so we've got our constants here, our variable, our note names. We initialize it there. We grab this constant. It should be a constant though. Note names. So it ain't changing, or is it? Well, it ain't changing our runtime. Init, we do that. Then we do this. And we get the node info. So we're just going to replace the process. <clears throat> and leave our little print intact. I'm going to have to equip for lunch here in a moment. So we get the note info now in our update the signal connections in the panel display. Yeah, now we get that and handle MIDI note needs to then do its thing. Okay, given the new dis panel display, handle MIDI note. Now we're no longer getting so we don't need this any longer. This is cool. So we've already got that. Uh, bit of duplication there. We should move this to a common constants. And uh, yeah, I have to look at this and be more careful, but when we generate, so we're generating the piano keys, we're rendering them out, we're associating the MIDI name, the note name, or the pitch class with each of the keys. And... Octave, of course. But I don't think we need this anymore. I have this now. Let me think about it for a second. Okay. We're passing it, just let me get the name of it again. Note info, MIDI note info. Right. 
So the node on and node off are receiving MIDI note info. And we're going to pass that into this MIDI uh, note to key name, which is fine. And it's going to return the same. This is where my annotations would come in handy. And I can even annotate this with the struct. You know, adding these uh, incremental typing, it just helps you making sure your code is uh, clean and easy to understand, but also when refactoring and things, the IDE can actually kind of help you out. So we'll have a new class, it's essentially, uh, we'll initialize it. So they don't have data classes um, like Python, which would give you this initializer for free, but that's cool. And we'll put this in the MIDI helper, I believe. To create a structured data type in MIDI note in Godot, you can uh, define a class that represents the data with, while GDS script doesn't have dedicated struct type, it's found in some other programming languages, you can have similar functionality using a class. And I think, uh, I think I'll just put it in the, so now here's the key thing, annotate, right? Boom. Is that how you do it? How do you annotate? Yeah, like that. <clears throat> do I have to put it before there, or why is it not highlighting it? I guess annotations don't get highlighting. Okay. And now we return this with those arguments. Oh, there it goes. I just seen it. Oh, it just didn't happen here. Anyway, can we put a trailing comma and get some better formatting there? We have Control Shift P. Ooh, format. Ah, okay. Does Godot have a formatting convention? This one it just helps me to read vertically. As you can see on my limited display, it's already getting uh, a bit challenging to read everything correctly. But especially like when uh, reviewing pull requests and stuff, you surprisingly often have only this much uh, display. The old Unix 80 character uh, width. So I'll we'll return. We'll just do this, copy this line. I think everything else is the same. We'll return this paste that whole thing but uh, again I'm just gonna put line breaks here to help me out <coughs> excuse me okay and then you create an instance of that so this is also going to re receive in the piano display We'll just start annotating. There we go. Now our annotation is working. But where does it come from? Is this now a global or huh? Does it do I have to import it?
I put it in the MIDI handler because I don't know where else to put it. And uh, is this auto importing everything? That's kind of a mess if that happens. In GD script classes defined within a script are local to that script and do not automatically and are not automatically available in other scripts of the project. All right, that's good. To use the MIDI note info class across multiple scripts, you have a couple of options. One, define the class in a separate script. Create a new script called file MIDI note info .gd, uh, where I can define that. Extends reference. Using references as a base class is common. All right. Use the class in other scripts. In MIDI, you can... Use as a type. Uh, when I hmm. okay, up to auto load the MIDI handler with the class. Oh yeah! If you prefer to keep the MIDI note info class within the MIDI handler GD, you can auto load the MIDI handler GD and access the MIDI note info through it. So yeah, that's why it was available because this this whole thing is auto loaded. Okay. That can be dangerous, I can see that, but, uh, hmm. uh, Recommendations. The first option, separate script with class name is generally cleaner and more modular. It's especially useful in the, if the class is going to be widely used across the project. If the MIDI note info class is only relevant in the context of MIDI handling and it won't be used extensively outside of it, keeping inside the MIDI handler GD could be more suitable. Just reading very fast. Uh, I'll be right back. We're going to leave it where it is and um, add a few more type annotations. I think we're getting close to being done here. I just want to return this data structure and then I'll have to uh, move a little bit more logic out of the piano display. So, but I'll be right back. Okay, got a little chilly. You gotta wear a sweater inside. So it sounds like I'm gonna keep the thing here. And uh, since we're auto loading into a globally available class, I can use for annotations at the very least. Two more steps to do in this session. It's been a long one. One, use this new data structure inside of the piano display.
So just getting the values back out of the class. Then the goal of the whole thing was to display the text above the piano. We've had to refactor a bit, which will save us time later. We won't have to refactor so much in the future. All right, so now we just need to handle these events. And take a look at what we're doing here in this MIDI note to key, na key name. This is now MIDI note info, which is why these annotations are important. Because, well, wait a minute. Actually, I could just do this MIDI note info dot and see if we get some autocomplete going on. MIDI. No. If it knows it's a MIDI note info, it would be nice to autocomplete that. tool will help me out here a bit. I didn't get the help. Let's see if it works. MIDI note number to key name. some parts that are mixed use of tabs and spaces for indentation. Okay. 54 in MIDI handler. I pasted something in. Oh, I see. I just have extra space there. Oh, and that's why perhaps can't really give me the help here. There was a um, syntax error and the thing was just uh, not able to help me out here. I'm just going to try that out again, like mini. Well, dang. Parse error. Identifier note names not declared in current scope. Oh, yeah. So, MIDI handler. Yes, so I, I use that as a constant. Some more stuff. Cannot return value type MIDI note from the function type return type is dictionary. Okay, so this is good that it's catching me now. Whoops. But it would be nice that it would catch it at well, before like compile time, I suppose, but nonetheless, I think it's compiling. I'm not sure what's going on, but if it would tell me here, as I'm used to with like Pydantic, it just tells me here I get some squiggles. Hmm, another one. Could not find the type MIDI note info in the current scope. Yeah, yes, that's why it's not able to annotate it. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, so you need, okay, okay. That makes sense, I didn't catch that. So you have to have, you know, it's namespaced. So everything right now is in the globally loaded MIDI handler namespace. And then, and then, and then, now my stuff. Yes, yes, now it will work very good, right? I get all the properties there. Ah, oh, beautiful. MIDI number is what we're after. Great, okay, I get it. That makes total sense. 
And namespaces are great. Let's use more of those. They're a honking great idea. Let's use them everywhere. Now we're getting that print stuff is going out there. Good to go. <laughs> Midi, what did we call again? Yeah, type annotations are really helpful. Now, the last thing I think is to uh, we're going to create a new scene. Display the information above the piano um, display and we'll import those both into the main scene. I'm just going to see with just that information what it gives me advice wise the creation of the scene, the scene name, note display, attach a script, note display. All right, step one create a new scene for the note information display. We'll call it note display scene. It'll be a 2D scene. Notice I don't have to type TSC in here, but I'm going to see. If... All right. If it... <laughs> well, I thought I was going to put TSC in, but I must have typed that earlier. Okay. Then we will open note. Note, note display is already open. Uh, you might. So let me think. Set up the layout. This design is seen according to how you want to display the node information. You might use label nodes to show text or other UI elements. Save the scene. I guess we'll put a label in there. No label. Child node label. And it looks like it wants to be called note label. So we'll rename this. Now here's where keeping the base class is useful because it kind of helps me remember. I see the icon and I see this as a label. Now we're going to attach a script to the note display scene gg script node 2d and we will just uh, extend control. Oh, would that work? Uh, when it's ready, we get the node, and then we receive the MIDI info. Change the text. Weird. Okay, so that seems like legit. Add the note display to the main scene and wire it up. So what we did here in the main scene, opening it. Uh, sorry, the scene. I don't know why it's so cold here. Why well, I'm so cold at least. Note display scene can go. I'm going to put it above the piano display since they're at least geometrically 
arranged like that, but then I don't know about the Z index. They shouldn't overlap though. All right, main GD on ready var note display equals note display. All right, this is a feature that's relatively recent. Now we'll grab that. Note display, display note info. Oh, on many received note. Hmm. Right. Let me think here. So the signal for the piano was done here. And they're ready. I think the control node probably has it ready. Yeah, it has it ready. As long as it works, it's basically implicit that if we can select that, and we did that, it will work. Now we'll connect MIDI note on to the handle MIDI note on, handle MIDI note off. Um, And we'll just do a function. This is where Copilot would be helpful. Basically, empty it out when the Mini note is off, we're not displaying anything. Uh, could not find type mini note info in the current scope. What did I do wrong? Yes, that's right. It's namespacing. I have to just use the correct namespace. It's MIDI handler dot. Yes, then, then we are good. I hope. <laughs> Let's find out. Here we go. And a red text. I see it. Identifier. I expect to identify in class body. Main GD at uh, three. Okay. And since we're not really using it, actually, I don't quite need that. I'm not even sure if that's correct. Red text. No red. No red. Hey, there we go. Got some text. Very beautiful. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting, interesting problem. I'm playing multiple notes. Ah, uh -huh. well, we're making progress. At this point, I need to take a break. Three hours. We need to eat lunch. Do some cleaning. But it looks good so far. I just realized we have a fundamental mistake that we're only handling one note at a time. All right. So this should actually return. This is interesting because 
That works. Right, so I should be able to append. It's basically appending it, or and there needs to be some ordering as well. This is going to get complicated pretty fast. Um, well, the sort is natural, so whatever the lowest, you know, sort from low to high, that's a good start. But then, yeah, you're going to do triads and inversions and stuff, and actually. Well, at this level of abstraction, it doesn't matter. Sort to low to high. Then we need to go to figure out what the chord name is, though. Uh, yeah, it gets more complicated. The three same three tones put in any order are the same chord. C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. Those are all C major. G, G, E, C, E, that's a C major as well, right? Okay, so it's like set theoretic. It's, that's right, that's a set of pitch classes. All right, we'll, we'll look at that later. So in our note display, So I'm just going to paste it in here. Here's what we've got. And we're going to see if we can uh, create a list or an array, whatever they call it in Godot, and um, probably stringify that somehow, concatenate those together into a string. Uh, right, so we've got note display, extends control, active notes is a list, array, OK. That's a, and then we have this label, notes labeled. That doesn't, uh, did that work in the notes display? Ah, I'm in the wrong file here. No label equals label. Notes label now. And this isn't working, it's just the path. Or it will it in the re relative. Hmm. When a MIDI note is played, MIDI note on. So I'll append it if it, the pitch class isn't already there. And that's interesting. I wonder if Godot has a set. All right. And, but this looks like fairly straightforward. Let's see if it works, though. Not always confident in the, uh, no, parts are on identifier in the body. OK. Last time we didn't. It just created a label. I think it's not okay. So now it's trying to get a reference to this one. What I can do is this. I think uh, there should be a nice feature I can drag and drop. Let me just delete this real quick. 
this comment from the end of the line and I think if I just take this and I go here or right there unexpected identifier in class body line five strange this is where my limited knowledge of Godot starts to hurt and especially because uh, these are I think this is newer Line five. <clears throat> oh, current use of them. Haven't done that in a while. Continue the default model now or try again in 252. So it's a good enough time to uh, take a break. But I think if I just do this. Previously, I think it was that. Let me just double check up here. Active notes and my okay, that's what it's telling me to write. Okay, can do. But here, I think I just created one and it didn't get a reference. Instead, I. Yeah, so it just creates a variable, notes label, label, and then we should be able to run that. Not have that reference error, although this notes label is not being used. Oh, crud. Cannot find the type. Yeah, okay. Same problem here. So we're gonna do that. Ah, oh, it's not working. Hmm. That's why. Rename this, pluralize it, because it's notes. Save that, and then why did these turn red? I didn't buy note. Label, notes, label. There we go. Yes. Hopefully it'll work. So I'm surprised that the unready part didn't work. Oh man. Hmm. Okay, so we do have this string join method. That's good. Let's see if we can print this. This should be working. Sign it there. Expect this, but identifier notes text is not declared in the current scope. Okay, so you just gotta do var or const. Does it have that const? Here we go. And we'll see if we get some print output here. No, okay, all right, so that's the problem. Something around update display. why this wouldn't work unless this got I don't wanna, yeah debugger errors Thank you. 
I don't know if it needs to be a node, but I think the control just doesn't have a ready uh, lifecycle callback, perhaps. Let's find out. Dang. Oh, 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 I see. Plural, plural. Small, small details. All right, got the details. The callback is not happening because I don't have a signal. I lost my register, my signal. The signal's gone there. Okay. Signal handler got removed. You must think that I'm using the uh, main scene. I think there's a little bit of back and forth in the conversation and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, honestly, on is a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now we've got our uh, our signals and wired up and uh, ready to go. And yes, yes. All right, I got to call it a day. Oh, what did I just delete? I'm just deleting things. Oh, print. Just, duh. no, no, goodness. All right, this is why I got to call it a day. I'm hungry. I need to remove my print statements. Yes, print statement, print statement. Whew. Okay, later on we'll figure out some more advanced things like I want to put it over here and make it look nice. But this is great progress. In fact, in fact, I'll just take a quick look at the main scene. I think if I go to 2D, uh huh. How big is this scene? I don't even know, right there. It's got everything in one place. No, nope, that's not the one. Oh, darn it. How do I get to the note display? <laughs> piano display. Note display. Piano display can go back to zero, zero. I mean, it doesn't quite matter. But I want the notes like, yeah. Can I just do that? That'd be really cool. Or should I do it programmatically, I suppose? If I go to the inspector, inspector gadget, reset that. What did I do? Have I not been saving? There we are. So yeah, this is cool. So if I hit two D's, I just get a D. Very cool. This is a great start. And I think even this app is useful for like YouTube piano vloggers and stuff. I could publish this and uh, people could use that, you know, when they're giving tutorials and stuff like that. I think everything is saved. Uh, I could add. Wish would just tell me how to do that. Oh yeah, I can't use GPT. I am such. Uh, it's my crutch. No, it's alright. It's a very good source of knowledge, and you know we don't memorize everything, all the Git commands and all that stuff, right? 
but I'll open a pull request now. I know how to do that. If I click here, it should say, hey, what was my issue number? Number eight. I'll leave it open because I think there's some a little bit of room for improvement, make the uh, text a bit bigger. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this is great progress. It's almost four hours, you know, pretty close, pretty close. So that uh, closes number eight, links it up to the issue. We should see a relationship there. For reference, uh, here's the issue number eight and the related pull request. If anyone would like to check these out by the time you're watching this video, if you're watching on YouTube, this might already be merged, but nonetheless, you should be able to see the changes, you know, exactly, um, particularly the, um, what are we at? Things that are in the GD are, I think, of most interest. Very cool. Making good progress here. A nice little piano app, and I'll think about more of the roadmap and how we'll turn this into a pedagogical tool. Right now, it's just information display. This has been another open source live code hangout. You can see the project here on github.com slash goodogarden slash piano practice. Uh, you can help us out. We got a couple of discussions that are open. We're looking for ideas for a project name, project mascot. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of market analysis to see what makes us unique and how we can fit into uh, the landscape of piano pedagogical tools without you know, like overlapping too much or competing with big contenders as well as uh, figuring out how we can sustain the project, you know, uh, financially, uh, make it useful, but also um, have some longevity. Uh, and then more details for the game design document will be forthcoming, but uh, nonetheless, we have a conversation open uh, so you can submit your ideas and uh, tell us, you know, more about your uh, learning journey specifically relating to piano but maybe also music pedagogy and um, we'll see what we can do this is focused pretty closely to the piano though and or midi instruments but uh, specifically we're rendering a piano uh, interface all right well thanks for checking out the live stream hope you're doing well and have a great day